Okay, so I want to do a video real quick about this tool right here. Now this tool, if you don't recognize what it is, is a differential gear service set. It's um, what you use to like pull bearings off of pinions so you can um, change the pinion depth shims without damaging the bearings. Same goes for pulling uh, bearings off of like carriers without damaging them because you know, you can get bearing pullers take bearings off of things, but it usually damages the bearing, especially when it's pressed tight with only, you know, a 10,000 thick shim between it and a gear. So this kit is very useful for that. And it's basically the only way to do it, to be honest, to remove repeatedly um, gear bearings for the purpose of changing up shims and setting up gears without damaging the uh, bearings. So uh, I bought this one years ago. Uh, this one's one of the only ones that you can buy. It's made by Yukon. Uh, it's like a $700 set of tools. And you know, for someone like me who's done hundreds of gear sets, it makes sense to have a $700 set of tools. Well, I was, uh, you know, answering someone's question. I probably get this question multiple times a week and I was just looking for a picture of this tool or a link for this tool to send them. Like, this is the tools you'd use if you wanted to buy them to do your own gears. And what I found in my searches was this. I don't recognize that company. Don't know anything about that company. But instead of it being six or seven hundred dollars, it's a hundred bucks. Now I guarantee there's no way it's going to be nearly as good of a product. There's no way. But what I can tell you is that for the average guy, I bet you it's probably good enough for someone who's just going to do a few gear sets. So no paid sponsorship here or anything, but I think someone should buy that and tell me if it's any good. I mean, I don't need to buy it. I have this one and this one works great. So I'm not going to necessarily go out of my way and buy it, but someone should buy it and tell me if it's good. Comment, say, hey, this is a great kit or it's garbage. Um, it looks to be pretty close to the same. couple of things look different. Like it looks like these spin nuts have just like a sh like slightly different like, cut to them. Um, and then some of these... Like the radius of this looks a little bit more square. So it looks like it's more of a clone rather than a private label of the same product, maybe the same factory per se. But either way, uh, I think this is, it's about time because people need this kit to do gears. And it's it's been kind of ludicrous to think that this tool set being several hundred dollars has kept people from learning how to do gears themselves or at the very least, you know, um, <laughs> or at the very least doing it the easy way, which is with the right tools. So I, I'm really excited to see what um, what else is you know available and starts becoming available. Maybe patents have expired. I, I feel like this hasn't been around long enough for the patent to have expired, but yeah, I, I can't wait. So please, someone buy this kit and tell me if it's any good. Uh, and if it is, I mean, we'll start you know having everybody that does the Tahoe landing axle swap go buy it and you know be able to change their gears because that is the one thing. When you have a uh, 373 GMT 800 uh, gear ratio and you're doing the Tahoe overlanding axle swap, which uses a Dodge Dana 44, that never actually came in a 3.73 gear ratio. So if you wanted to stay 373, you're going to have to change gears either way. So, um, you know, basically it does mean that a gear change is due somewhere. Or, you know, if you're lucky and have a 410 truck, then you can try to find a 410 uh, Dodge axle, but the problem with that is is that those are pretty hard to find. And so either way, you're probably going to have to change gears, either in the front end or maybe in the rear end to match what's in the front that you find. I don't know. I mean, uh, like I was looking at doing another one, um, another swap on this truck I got, and I did look around locally, and I found a 3.92 ratio axle in a junkyard. And I thought, you know, I mean, maybe I'll put that one in and then I'll just change the rear end gears to 392 instead of trying to change that to 373. So, you know, I mean, I think it's something that it would be valuable for the whole group of people to know. Now, while we're on the subject of axle options that Dodge had and what ratio you have in your truck, the way you check that is you open up your glove box and inside your glove box is a white sticker about that big. It has a whole bunch of uh, three digit uh, alphanumeric codes. And they're usually in some form of, um, you know, like alphabetical order usually. So you want to look for the G section of those codes. So G80 means that you have that uh, gov lock, rear locker, which sucks. And also, usually right after that is GT something. 
So for example, GT4 is 373, and GT5 is 4.10, and that's what uh, ratio your uh, differential gears are at currently. So you can look and see what you have without having to climb up under there because there's not really usually tags on these differentials and it'd be hard to like, some guys show online like spinning the drive shaft or spinning the wheel and trying to count. Just look at your uh, RPO code list in your glove box. Well, as you're doing that, um, now you determine what axle uh, ratio you have. Uh, if you have a 4.10 ratio, then obviously maybe try to find a Dodge axle to 4.10 ratio and you don't have to change anything. If you have a 373 ratio, it doesn't matter what axle you get. You're going to have to change something. So you either have to change the uh, gears in the differential you get for the front, or you'll change the uh, gears in the rear to match the differential you got in the front. So if you do find a 410 axle, for example, then you could just put 410 gears in the rear. So if you're going to do the top overlanding axle swap, plan on doing a gear change if you have 373 gears. You're just not going to find something that matches. At least not... <laughs> unless someone's swapped in 373 gears for some other reason, and you happen to find that. And that's good, that's fine. So uh, as you're looking for axles, just keep that in mind. So 373, wide range of axle options. And if you are looking for um, you know, that 2000 to 2001 axle that you know we need to have to make the whole six lug work on the outers, sometimes that just doesn't work out at the beginning of your swap. So what you can do is just get any 1994 to 2001 axle housing from a Dodge Ram 1500 Dana 44. And some of the 2500s have a Dana 44, so you could technically get one of the rare uh, Dana 44s from a 2500. If you do find one that's a Dana 44 from a 2500, it's going to be um, it's going to be probably in a gas 2500. Now you have a wider range, and then you can start on your swap while you're hunting around the junkyards to find just the knuckles and calipers you need from the 2000-2001 Dodge Ram 1500 Data 44. And then you can swap those on towards the end of your swap instead of, you know, right at the beginning. That's, that's one option you have if you uh, have a really hard time, you know, at the beginning finding that, because there's always cycles rotating in junkyards. Which leads me into another topic that always seems to come up for people who just don't know, and I realize that a lot of you know, the people doing the swap just don't know a lot of these things, and I guess I should cover them more. Um, so I keep saying 410 or 4.10 ratio Dodge. It's actually technically 4.09. 409, 410, 411. You're going to find people refer to that ratio by like any number of those three. And to be honest, they all interchange. They do not have to be to the 100th of a revolution. So 4.09 and 4.10 or 4.11 will work wonderfully, you know, interchangeably with a, a differential in the rear that matches that. Um, for example, 373. We call that 373. It is technically 3.72727272727272 is what that end up, ends up uh, equating in most differentials and the number of teeth if you divide them against each other. So if you see it, say 410, if you see it, see, say 4.09, either way, that's the one that means 410. And you... For some reason, see 409, 410, 411 change around a few times, and 373 just stays 373. Even if it's 3.72, 3.73, 3.74, it's just always called 373. I don't know why. So don't worry about that. What you want to look at is gears are usually, for the most part, in the same steps. 373, 392, 410, 430, 456, 488, 513, 514, that's another one. 13, 14 seems to change around a little bit depending on brand and whatever. Those, you're in the same step. So, you know, if you've got a set of, you know, 428s in the rear and 430s in the front, again, that would be fine. So um, don't get hung up on that. I actually think that that's probably another pretty common discussion I've had with customers is that have 410 um, or, you know, GT5 trucks that have 410 factory when they are looking for a differential and I, I'll get a message, oh man, I can't find a 410 Dodge Axle. I can only find a 409 Dodge Axle. And that's the one you want. Get it. Well, doesn't it have to be the same? I swear, I've probably had that conversation 10 times. And it doesn't have to be precisely the same because it never will be. It's a combination of the number of teeth on the pinion gear and the ring gear. And depending on the differential, the number of teeth versus the size of the gear... Uh, you know, like the diameter of the ring gear and everything, 
it doesn't always work out. So like 410, for example, a really common one is 41 teeth on the ring gear and um, was it? And then 10 teeth on the pinion. That's how you get 410. But on, and that's like a Dana 30, for example, can get 410 that way. But a Dana 44, bigger ring gear, I think it's, what is it? I don't know. I'd have to look it up. You know what? I'll put it up on the screen when I go look up what 410 is um, for a Dana 44 or 409 technically. But it's because of the size of the ring gear and the, the size of the teeth, you know, the contact pattern of the teeth, the contact patch of the teeth. They're limited to um, the numbers that they can make work between the ring gear and the pinion gear. So, yeah, that's um, not something to really worry about. Um, 409, 410, 411. So, don't sweat that if you do uh, run into that one. I know that that's um, a lot of people know that, but to be honest, it seems like a lot of people also don't know that. And uh, I just figured I'd cover it right now. And so, for those of you that already knew it, just ignore this part of the video. You knew it. <laughs> don't worry about it. And so, yeah, I, I actually think um, if you guys are interested, comment below and tell me, but uh, should I do a video that's about doing gears, like doing gear changes? Um, like I, I found that most people that need to do a gear change don't have the ability to do it themselves or so they think. And so most of them end up paying um, a shop to do uh, the gears for them instead of just doing it themselves. And it's remarkably simple. I can't even tell you how easy it is to do gears, to be honest. Uh, when you finally understand that it's just a matter of setting pinion depth, setting backlash, and setting pinion rolling resistance, that's it. You could, <laughs> I mean, is that something that I need to do a video on, or is there enough videos out there on YouTube to help you do it? Uh, so comment and tell me if I need to do a video on gears, because I will if, um, if you need me to. Now, I, I mean... <laughs> It's going to have to be a minute because uh, I don't have any differentials that need gears right now. I'd have to go, you know, get a set of gears and set one up for you. Um, I'm really thinking that uh, I have an opportunity coming up here soon. But again, I don't, I don't want to make videos that I want to make. Uh, that was a mistake I made two and a half years ago when I first did this swap and I was documenting everything. Is I, I thought I knew what everybody wanted to see or would need to see and I was dead wrong. Um, so as I started posting videos, I, there were things that I didn't even document because I thought it was just too mundane, too common knowledge. There was no point even documenting it. And I got bombarded with questions about that. That was specifically the drive shaft. So those of you that have been following me for a couple of years may remember that the drive shaft, I didn't post anything about it at the beginning because I just thought drive shaft is such a simple thing to go and do. Why do you need to go out and, um, you know, make a video about it and spend any time talking about it? So... That's why I need your input, because I don't know what you want to see. Um, I, I just don't. So comment, tell me what you need, what you want me to talk more about, what you want to focus more on, and I will definitely do it. Thanks for watching.